Roy interview 23.3, take one. <laughs> Hi friends, I am here once again with great pleasure and it's a great honor to be with my dear teacher, Roy McCurdy, as you may have seen in our last video. He was one of my first teacher, my first teacher basically, and uh, <clears throat> someone who had so much influence on me as a player uh, that uh, I can't even, you know, begin to to describe what kind. I mean, you know, basically shaped my whole playing in jazz, and uh, uh, you know, it's a, it's great to be here with. Every time I get to hang with Roy, it's a it's a privilege. Like I'm sure you guys, if you've had teachers like that, I'm sure you felt the same way. <laughs> so anyway, here we are with Roy. Yeah. How are you feeling? I'm feeling good. Well, that's a a great. A really great compliment, oh, considering you. the the drummer that you turned out to be. A man of just a fantastic drummer, man, and, and, and educator, man. So I mean, that's a really nice compliment. Thank you, Thank man, you. Roy, man. <laughs> Thank you. I I uh, always wondered, you know, even when I was a kid, I would listen to your records, you know, with all, with all the records you you played on, and I was wondering, you know, what is there one that was your favorite thing? Oh. I don't know. You know, I've had that question before, and uh, I I don't have a favorite. That's funny. You know, I've played on so many, right? Uh, but I just I think maybe all the things I did with Canon. Every time we did an album, that well, this was my favorite. Every time, right, did, right. Oh, this is my favorite. <laughs> you know? uh, the the album that I did with Sonny with Coleman Hawkins that that was a, that was one of my favorite albums too. You know, so I had several. Um, you know, so you know, that's how I felt about it. You know, <laughs> you know, I, I did a lot of them, but during the, that period of time, those those kind of things were my favorites at the time. Mm -hmm. Was there any recording or any event that you would say this was like a breakthrough moment, where you where you said, "Oh, because of this recording, or whatever, I'm going to be able to do more or get more gigs," or people started recognizing you? Well. I think maybe for that that particular thing, it would probably be, I'd have to go right back to the beginning when I was recorded with the Mangione brothers. Oh. You wow. know, and then Cannonball, uh, Adderley had this, this series called Cannonball Adderley Presents on Riverside Records. Wow. And it, he was recording new talent and old talent that needed to be heard, you know, and the Mangione brothers was, band was called the Jazz Brothers and that band he felt needed to be heard so he recorded us. Wow. And through that recording we started traveling to different cities we went to to re push the recording and we wound up in New York City at the five spot and uh, Art Farmer came in to hear Chuck and because uh, Chuck was kind of like a prodigy. Right. right. And uh, but he also heard me at that time. And when we got back to the Rochester after the tour, I got a telegram and asking to come down and join the jazz tet. So, wow. So I think that was kind of the breakthrough. And once I did that, once once I got down there, you know, I did a few recordings with them too, which opened up things too. But but that particular recording with the Jazz Brothers, I think, opened up a lot of things. Wow, that's great. Yeah. What well, around what year was that? You know? About nineteen sixty. Okay. Yeah, early, late parts fifty nine, early sixty. Great. Uh, we got to try to find some recordings. Of them. Yeah, yeah. They're around, right? Yeah, they're around. Yeah, they're around. All right. One of those covers, I was, wish I could buy them all so you couldn't, nobody could see them anymore. Why? 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 <laughs> because they had all this. But yeah, they're still around. They're still around. We were just, we were just young guys on the cover. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> well, you weren't like Tony who had, had his that photo in it with all the legs that he's on the floor like oh, this. Oh, no, no. <laughs> Not like that. No, right? no, no. no. <laughs> When you were playing with <clears throat> with Cannonball, all the time on the road, what what are the things that you remember the most from being on the road and all those gigs? Oh, well, first of all, when I when I first joined him for the first two years, we were driving into the place. So those, right. you know, we would start in New York and we'd drive across country to, to California, up to Vancouver, and play all the way man gigs all the way these gigs would be two three weeks at a time you know wow 
and jump in the car after that and drive it. So, and we do that all the way across country up to Vancouver, then all the way back to New York. So, you know, we, so we'd be gone a few few months. You know? Right. Uh, so doing that was very memorable because the conversations and the fun we had. That we had two station wagons in, in the car and everything. I, I still can't believe we did all that because we had. The luggage, the instruments, and all of us too, right. two, two station wagons, Darn. and driving across country. So, and then playing all these great places, you know. So, you know, that was very memorable. I, I, I enjoyed all. Of it. Then after that, after a couple of years down into it, we started flying every place. Oh, great! You know? Good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but we would stay awake, man, and just drive and drive right. and drive. <laughs> you know, Sometimes all that driving, is, it changes you, it can be sort of like meditative, especially if yeah, it's yeah. straight roads, and straight and straight. That's weird. It's, that's yeah. very true. And I I enjoy driving, you know, I, I enjoy driving at nighttime, especially nighttime right, is right. better for me. You know? Yeah. Did you have to drive also? Oh, Take yeah. a turn? Oh yeah, everybody took turns. Right, right, right. <laughs> that's great. <laughs> that's great. Well, I think it's important for people to hear because, you know, they, when you're a kid, you imagine he's going first class, you know, on a, on a spaceship and he just yeah. teleports himself over to the <laughs> <laughs> well, No, it was, that driving was, a, was, a, was, was something. It was, wasn't until we started flying that everything was really cool. Right, right, you know? right, right. But we did the same thing with, not even, with, not only with Canada, but we did the same thing with the Jazz Tet because that was before Canada. Uh -huh. And traveling with them was the same way thing, same thing. Two station wagons, you know. Wow. That was with Art Farmer and Benny Golson and those guys, you know. So. Wow. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm imagining with, with Nancy Wilson, it was it was different. Right? Well, Nancy was different. We flew every place. Everything was right. cool. Yeah, it was really, and and everything was like first class with Canon too. Yeah. I mean, after right. we started flying, and everything was so. Everything after that was was different. Right. Right. The, the only big difference than playing with Cannon and and the, and the Jazz Ted and all those people that I played with and the way we traveled, the big difference was when I joined Blood, Sweat and Tears. Mm. And when I was with Blood, Sweat and Tears, well, it was a whole different story. Right, right. It was all, it, it was serious first class stuff. Right, right. <laughs> How long did you play with them? A little over a year. Wow. And so, you know, the money was good. The the, the you know, I didn't have to slop no sludge, slap right, no right. drums around. They had drum tech. Right, it's great. You know all that. That's great. They had, they had roadies. Uh, they had, you know, with trailer trucks and all right, that. Right, you know, right. So we didn't have to do nothing but show up and sit out and play. Ah, that's and, great. You know, and everything was picked up at the house and. Luggage was picked up the day ahead of time, and they send limos, and then they do the same thing, bringing you back home. So it was all first class stuff. It was so so much different than it was right. playing jazz games. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Playing rock. Yeah, yeah. 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 Totally. Magic. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. Got any crazy stories about uh, gig stories? About blood, sweat, and tears. Blood, sweat, and tears. <laughs> crazy fans trying to get your autograph and stuff. Well, you know, with blood, sweat. <laughs> With blood, sweat, and tears, there was always we were always surrounded with people, man. It was just crazy. I mean, you you, you know, you go to the hotels, there'd be people in the hotels waiting waiting for you. Yeah, you know, wow. same. But you know, it was the same. We had jazz situations with the same thing, but but it was different for me because when I went in to play with jazz artists, you check in the hotel and you didn't see nobody until you went to the gig. Right, right, right. right. But there'd be people. Waiting for you for blood, sweat, and tears for autographs in the, in the lobby. That's great. And the only other time that ever happened to me with, with was jazz it was when I went to Japan. Every time I went to Japan, it was like that. Oh yeah. Even the first time with Sonny Rollins, I mean, just we were picked up at the airport, and was, there was three or four hundred people waiting at the airport. Wow. <laughs> you know, oh, that's uh, huge jazz fans. I jazz, mean. yeah, it was huge. And then the lobbies be full of people trying, waiting for to get autographs and things. No you kidding. Know? Yeah, it was just it was, it was amazing. You know. Wow. So, it's still good, good, good over there. It's not as as intense as it was then right. because they have a lot of musicians right. and things of their own now. But right. But it's still you're still you're still treated with a 
a lot of respect when you go into Japan. Right. Now, you know? Especially if they know who you are. Right, right. You know? That's nice, right? To get somewhere and feel like they really want to hear your oh, music. Yeah, yeah. And, it's amazing. You know? Yeah. <clears throat> like walking into walking into clubs, walking into uh, coffee bars and things where they have jazz and they immediately see you, they know who you are and they start pulling up all the records that you ever played on and start oh, playing them, you that's know? Great. Yeah, you know, things like wow. that. So, that's yeah. great. Yeah. I had the same experience, but at the post office, somebody's uh, <laughs> most wanted sign. <laughs> yeah, yeah you, it, it's, it's always shocked because I never think about that, you know, I never think about you know, it's, you're just, they, they just treat you like such a big star, you know? Yeah. Uh, that, that's very nice to hear, especially, I think, for guys wanting to get into jazz or, or just learning jazz, uh, mm -hmm. you know, because many, many times I, I, I have a lot of students from all over the world, you know, on the lesson side and stuff like that. And, and, and you know, it's so hard to, like, break into jazz. And the general mm -hmm. idea is that it, there's so little audience left and it's so difficult and to actually hear from you you know like the opposite side that it can be so mm -hmm. great also yeah, it's yeah, very it's, important it's, yeah it's great so, you know it's, you know there's a lot of things that that you go through that you probably don't want to go through but, yeah but but you know for me for me personally it's it's been all positive you know, that's great so you know, so, um, you know it's people off to say, hey, you, you play jazz and you, you raised a family and right. you, a, you, you know, you have this and you do that. Yeah, we did that, you know, and, and it's been cool. Amazing. Yeah. Really amazing. Mm -hmm. what, what would you say is like maybe one of the most inspirational moments for you as a, as a player and a person like on the road or on a gig, you ever have like a concert that you were so happy with that you know, you felt like, wow, I've reached kind of the pinnacle of live music. Well, you know, there, there was several times, well, not several, but there was a few times when I was playing with Cannon. That band had been together for so long that you just, we'd be on the bandstand. I, I remember one time we were on the bandstand, I think it was in, in New Orleans, and you just reach a point where the playing is so good, it's, it's the level is so high, there's like, this crazy, sounds crazy, but it sounds like, it looks like you're outside of yourself, you know? I know, yeah. And looking, totally. you know, it's checking it out, you know, it's right. like you're outside, and, and the level is, of the music is so high, it's just, it's, it's just a, it's a hard thing to explain, but it's a crazy thing to do. Yeah. But, but it's been a couple, couple few times with, it doesn't happen all the time, right, just right. a few times, you know, yeah. especially when I was with Cannon and it came wow. to that point, you know, and, it's, and you said, wow, what was that? Right. It was, it was a hell of a night. You the know? strange power of music, right? I mean, I think that those out of, like, out of body it was experience. Out of, exactly. It's, it felt like you were out of your body. Yeah. You know? Yeah. You know, it felt like that. And then. It's like, it felt like a main, like you're just looking at checking yourself, but you know, but you're out of, right, you're standing over here. Right, right, right. But the level is so, bad. it's crazy. What, what do you think that's all about? I don't man? know. Is it was, but it's, it's hard to reach that. I mean, you, it's, Very. it's got, it's, it's, it's hard to be, you have to be, it's, I guess everything has to be perfect, you know, right, for you, for you to hit, right, right. right. And everybody has to be on the same, at the same level yeah. at that time. Very interesting. Yeah, yeah. And I, you know, I, I sometimes I, I tend to be, you know, analytical about these things. And okay, how can this happen? You know, yeah. maybe it's just a little bit of auto suggestion or something mm -hmm, like that. Mm -hmm. But I don't know, man. The, the times that it has happened to me, it's like so moving and so strange. It's very strange. It's, it's it is moving, and it hasn't happened in a long time. But I guess I think because, like I said before, I think because we were together and we were on the, and we played together so often and we were we we're, we're at the same level all the time yeah. the same guys right right you know so it, it all had something to do with that you know do you think uh, playing with the same guys a whole lot makes a difference like in the music and all that stuff yeah i mean it, yeah especially if you know but the level of the music has to be right 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 you know, yeah, if the level's not there, you can play the, the same guys. The same guys could beat it, but if the <laughs> level is, is, is high, you know, you know, it's, 
it's a whole different thing. Other things, you know, for me is like, I would go through not only that, but sometimes you'd go through like I would. Um, you'd be playing and playing and you just, I just feel, oh man, I'm not, I'm not improving. I'm, not, I'm just at the same place all the time. You know? uh -huh. I want to be, I want to move along, but I'm just right. playing the same things. I'm right, not right. It. And that would go on for a few weeks. And then this is the same thing when you're playing with the same people. Right, right. And then this would go on for a few weeks, and all of a sudden, man, it was like some light switch came on, and then you'd move up another. Right, level. right, right. And you'd be another. Right, right. You'd be at another level. So you know, that's also very interesting. Yeah. Because how how do those things come about? You know, when you when you analyze your playing, you know, how how do you, is it that you feel that you reached another level? Of, I mean, some people say, well, okay, because I simply did something I had in my head, some kind of lick right, or right. something. But I don't think but it's something. Yeah, but something happens that's, that, that, that brings you from here to here. Yeah. You know, and, and uh, you might be here for a long time, yeah. and then bam, right there, right. you're up here. You know? Could it be that it's something a, more, like a, almost a spiritual thing? That's, a, that's an emotional movement in, in yourself that you feel like you're connecting more? Yeah, and it could be like you're thinking about you're you're thinking so much about improving mm. and and raising your level and and I don't know. It's like I was stalled, and all of a sudden you're not, now now you're not stalled anymore. Right, you right, know, right, right. Go someplace else. It's a tr it's a really a trip. Yeah. yeah, even though the place that you are stalled is okay, it is it's great. cool. Yeah, 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 yeah but yeah. you're still for right. you. You want to move. Right, right, you know, right. You know. Yeah, I guess that that happens in the arts yeah. uh, and. And uh, and most artists that I, that I that I talk to, I guess it, that happens. Yeah, because but, the the the, per, the average person sitting listening wouldn't wouldn't. They won't count and tell the difference. difference. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> funny. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> which can be good and bad. Yeah. <laughs> you know, sometimes I I feel that you know a lot that the average listener perhaps doesn't understand to a big degree what's going on mm -hmm. in the music. You know, unless yeah. it's somebody really hip. To jazz or or it's musicians themselves. I don't know if it, like yeah. the average person. But most people they're there to be, just to be entertained. Yeah. Right? And and to and to listen and hear the things that they that they've that are used, that they've heard on records and right. things like that and say yeah oh, I love that tune right. I love that tune love that. you know I don't think they analyze it too much unless unless you're unless another musician's there listening you know right but, but most people are there just to be. Because they love what they hear on records and they want to hear it right. in person. You know? What do you think that, that, that there's something you can do about reaching the average person with, with jazz? Apart from doing, you know, some sappy ballad or mm -hmm. having vocal music. Well, you know, you have to... It's, it's communication, I think. I learned that from Cannon. You know, he would talk to the audience. Ah, uh, yeah. He would talk to them. He would tell them about the tunes. He would, in it, he would have little stories. You would educate them about the you know the music they were playing. Well, this is a blues, and this is how we came about this, and this and that, or you know whatever. He would he would involve them right in right. the music that was going on in the bandstand. Right, you know? right. And they enjoyed that. They they you know they felt like they were part of it. Right. You know? So so that's I, I think the communication because a lot you know a lot of musicians go on the bandstand they don't say anything right except, right except introduce the tune they right. later on this is this 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 is this is and that but they don't have a conversation with the people or you know too much you know i didn't you know how jazz musicians musicians try to be so cool yeah i know that's it, that's it. <laughs> put their mouth right on the mic and <laughs> you yeah. can't even understand what they're saying yeah yeah, yeah yeah <laughs> but but uh I think the communication is, is probably the, the best thing. It makes makes them making them feel that they're part of what's going on in the bandstand. Interesting. Yeah. An ability that's not so easy to open yourself up enough for the average person maybe to get insight into what. Mm -hmm. what yeah, you it, did. it's a knack, you know. People have it. Some people have it, and yeah. Some, and, and I think that uh, you know probably we should. You know, music, as musicians should probably kind of learn that. Even though that I'm doing a lot of things as leaders, I find when I'm, li when I was listening back to the thing the other night that we did, 
I probably could have communicated more too. I did talk to but, but when you were leading a band. Yeah, but to communicate. Uh -huh. But you know, but when, when I did talk, they they were they understood what was going on, and then you know, there was a there was a rapport back and forth. So you know, but I think those those are the kind of things that help. Yeah, I think you're right. Mm -hmm. I think you're definitely right. If if I if I talk to the people, tell little stories or whatever, and they seem to be more engaged. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. I mean, there's obviously a line where, you know, where it, become, it becomes like a circus show or whatever. Mm -hmm. you yeah, do. you don't want it to be that, but you want, but you just want to involve them and let them know what's going on and, and uh, let them know about, you know, what's, you know, if this is an original tune, how it came about and right. things like that, you know. That's, I think that's really nice. Mm -hmm. I seen, I saw some guy the other day who was starting just doing a piano thing and he starts like, jumping around and making people clap and stuff. it's like what is this a children's tv show or <laughs> you know I said, what i kind of lost respect for the guy yeah yeah when he started pandering and make it, it was almost like he thought people were so dumb he needed to like encourage them with <laughs> yeah, i don't know yeah I, you know i have things i have little pe pet peeves about things that i see too like get people do not just musicians but just entertainers and general you know right and this might sound crazy but this is one of them you, if you see a person come on the stage or a musician or a comedian or a, a host of it the first thing they say is how y'all doing today right <laughs> hey, how are y'all doing I, that, that always gets me I don't know why but for some reason well, I, I think it's just so cliche to say that yeah, it's yeah, not, yeah, it doesn't yeah. even mean anything when they yeah. say it yeah just, right it does, they don't care they, they just don't say care. it you know yeah Hey, how you guys doing today? What's uh, going on? Uh, try the meal. <laughs> <laughs> We're here all week. <laughs> yeah, that, that's pretty yeah. lame. Yeah, so that's the best one. But, you know, I don't... It's interesting because, uh, yeah, to open up a, a conversation with the people and include them like that so the, so the music somehow becomes more personal to them mm -hmm. is a key... Uh, I think it's a key element in re having them remember your show, maybe. Or... Then remember the music and maybe have the door open to jazz a little more. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just my imagination. But uh, then again, there's a, I've seen plenty of guys that don't, like you say, don't say a word. That's it. Yeah. And, and then, that kind of came from, I think, man, back, you know, you know, Miles had a reputation for right. doing that, not saying right. anything at all. Like, right, right, right. Just playing, not, you know. I guess the aesthetic of the music is supposed to be what carries everything and not yeah, the... Yeah, yeah, so... It, it was kind of a cold thing between the music was great, but it was kind of cold thing between the musician and the audience. And right. There was no smile, and nobody yeah, smiled. Yeah. And, you know, the, you know they just they just did it, did their thing. That was one of the things about Canon. Canon always, you know, it, it was always fun on the band. So, so we were right. like, you know, he was smiling because the music felt good, or, right. he, or when he's talking to the audience or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's important. After all, if you if there's no people mm -hmm. at some level to listen yeah. and to be, you know, mm -hmm. loving the music, or, mm -hmm. then there's I don't know. And yeah, Nancy Wilson was like that too. She would, yeah. she would really have a big rapport with the people, you know. That's I think nice. singers have more of it, but maybe they're, maybe they're used more yeah, used to it. Know they talk to folks. What what are some of the things you say when you when you're leading the band? When I'm on the bandstand, yeah. If you in front of them, you know. The uh, most of the time, I'm just you know I'm talking telling them about maybe about the tune that mm. we're getting ready to play or where who who wrote it or things like that. Uh, uh, you know, maybe a little stories if if there is a story to go uh -huh. along with it and uh, uh, just things like that. Just you know, just have some fun. You know, just, you know. Right. Yeah. That's important. Yeah, I think not not enough people talk about these kind of things. Mm -hmm. Everybody talks about the pair diddles and whatever, <laughs> but to get into the mind of like someone who's done a significant amount of work and somebody that has a a, a real track record, let's say, mm -hmm. and and that you know transcending just the musical aspect, getting into way deeper things let's say 
communicate how how the music communicates or how you relate to your audience and how mm-hmm. you're gonna bring them in. That's something I don't see at all. Yeah. People yeah. talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, do you think that that drumming pedagogy in general, the way that education is done now, you think it hurts drumming? What, not talking about things like or, well, or yeah, that or just. It, it seems to me like the the same thing gets regurgitated over and over. Uh, Paradils, or oh. whatever. I mean, it seems yeah. like there's no like. Well, I I tell you what, I I see a lot. I don't know. Maybe this is my see. if I watch Instagram or Facebook, mm. I see a lot of drummers on there that are doing a lot of stuff that I don't know if it's if if it's useful in right in real time point right 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 you know but a lot of things i'm not sure you know but I, you I, see a lot of yeah acrobatics and st- not acro- what, what is it you know a lot yeah, of yeah. stuff i think i think you're totally right i mean that's that's the thing i think the thing is when i when i see that uh, i look at a guy like that and i say i mean this guy has no contact with older musicians or, or any musician mm-hmm. you know he doesn't have like a mentor mm-hmm. there's this huge chasm between what he's showing and what's actually applicable in music yeah then i hear <laughs> yeah. you know, a whole bunch of different stuff you know which is which is i mean it's pretty amazing what they're playing between the feet and the yeah, hands yeah. and all that stuff but i'm just wondering is that gonna happen when you're, when you're you know, where you, or can you apply this to the real, right to real time stuff? I guess maybe some of it, but but I don't know. But it's just, uh, you know, it's, it, I don't know. <laughs> but yeah. I see a lot of it on, on when I'm watching. Yeah, a lot of it. Yeah. And you think social media has something to do with why that that is the case? I think so. I think so. They they they, they have that they have that platform, right, to come out and do it. You know, just kind of show it. I I don't, you know. The platform is there, so they're using it, you know. But there's a lot of people putting stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. I see some guys that are, that have some things that are really, you know, that are kind of use that are useful to right. play, you know. But but a lot of it, I just question. I wonder if they really use that, you know. <laughs> I don't think they do. I honestly don't think it. Yeah. There's there's a lot of uh, drumming that's sort of unusable. You know, like, like I, I think maybe in any art form, yeah. even in photography, you, know, you want to do a, some kind of photo that's an exposure, like a half an hour long of water or something. Mm-hmm. That, that, yeah. Very niche thing that maybe. Yeah. There's a couple, like, a couple of the books that, that that we study with students for, you know, for independence and things. And, and there's. A lot of things that you can play and develop your in, your independence between your hands and feet, and some things are are practical to use. I, I tell them this this would probably fit good if you're playing, but this maybe be a little right. comfortable to right, play. Right, you know, right. It's not the same. You, it's great to know how to do it, but it's, but it's not going to fit there. But there's some things here that are in the book that will fit really yeah, great. Yeah, right. You know, what would you do? How would you confront the issue of increasing somebody's musicianship? Like to uh, to be able to apply those things in music. Well, you know, you have to be selective about the things that you that are that are, that are there that you that you yeah. that you're looking at and 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 and, and practicing. You know, right. there's a lot of things. So, you know, I would pick out. I always tell them pick out the things that are useful for you. That you think maybe this is going to be something I can use, uh-huh. you know. Even though you can play the other things, play the things that are going to be comfortable, the things that you feel that that, that you can use on the bandstand, you know, right. without having to think too hard about the other things. Because sometimes there's some, some things there's some difficult things to play, and at the, at the spur of the moment, you aren't going to pull those up unless you know them. you've been playing right. for a long time. You know? Right. So you know, just pick out the things that. Learn how to do these things, but pick out the things that will be comfortable for you, and, and yeah. use those particular things. And then, after you after you have them under your belt, you know, make them your own. You change them around. For right, yourself. right. You know, it's a, right. a, a great. Yeah. yeah. You know, so, you know, you can. There's always ways to go from one thing to the other. Right, so, right. You know, you use them, use them for your. And everybody has a different way to do things. So here's things, True. everything. So you know, something that I might play, I might show somebody. They say. 
Oh yeah, and then they'll take it and they'll play to right, the same but embellish on it. Exactly. Right? So how do you how do you how would you make the actually the initial move of like deciphering what you like or what's useful or what's not? Uh, that's kind of hard. But but if if I hear something or or see something that I like, then I'll try to keep it. You know. So I, so you like from from the emotional the how it just grabs you. Yeah, exactly. The rawness of the emotion. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a very interesting. That's yeah. very good. Mm -hmm. That's very good. So if you don't have a like any way to measure what you can do in music, if you're yeah. living in whatever Indonesia and you want to play jazz, how do you even know what to select? I know. Huh? So it's it's the emotional. Uh, that's a great guide, I think. Yeah, it's yeah. Uh, it, the emotion has a lot to do with it. Right, right. You know, it's, it's it's all connected with the music and and the playing. I think you know. That's beautiful. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Wow. That's great, man. <laughs> well, anything else you would like to say to the beautiful people who watch the channel? No, you did, the guys. Thank you for watching. It's it's uh, yeah. I'm flattered. You know, there people still want to hear what I got to say about this stuff. But oh I'm, man, I'm having a great time. You know, yeah. and, and you know, I was just saying that for the last year and a half, maybe a little bit more, I've been doing a lot of colleges around. Oh yeah, around, around the country, and right. it's, it's really been fun, you know. Just to, they've been calling me in to, to, to come and do cl clinics and mm. master classes, and then concerts with the faculty. Right, you know, and and it's really been fine. Man. I just just came back from uh, Michigan State. I was in Florida, A and M, Florida State. Oh yeah, uh, a lot of different different places, and so. Um, talking about with other schools now so that's another avenue that's kind of right. opening up and where you can communicate and start you know showing with with, with, with young folks you know so. all right friends thank you so much for watching thanks to roy yeah my pleasure and uh i hope you will leave any comments you like in the in the comments section and you know if you have any questions for roy maybe we'll do another interview cool great cool i always love to bother him and come over and, <laughs> and talk to him. <laughs> <laughs> all right people peace out <laughs>